been making some progress on sorting here the subset of the collection starting off with the Technic and wheels categories and in my rubricable management these are put together to uh, minimize the uh, different lists I have going not sure how much of this I'll be trying to convert into my rubricable inventory most of these pieces are from the Boston Brick Company haul um, in fact one or both of these bins were the original bins that I had uh, from that bulk lot so those just kind of ended up in here they did get washed um, but then they never really got sorted all the way down I started working on plates and bricks before I left and then the rest of that just came with me so just working off the top layers for now and I think if you have if I had too many like all all my categories going at once it actually goes slower with only two or three at a time you can focus in a little bit more on certain groups of parts and uh, ignore the rest um, another thing I might try is taking one of these getting a scoop out of the full mix and then working all the way down through these bins one at a time into all the categories so I might be trying different approaches uh, just to see what works better or what I like doing um, but as far as sorting goes I don't mind it too much um, I'm kinda of to the point where it can be a background task and I can actually think about other things and just have some downtime so uh, the mental effort isn't as high as maybe putting together a set or, or building a mock and I enjoy both of those things as well uh, but sorting can actually be more of a background task and uh, more of a leisure thing when it comes to that side of Lego. Tomorrow is March 1st, 2022. That's usually when there's a new wave of set releases. Uh, so I was at Walmart this previous week and looked around, of course, to see what was going on. Uh, still nothing much in the way of clearance or sales of LEGO sets, which means I haven't really been buying as many new sets, but I did see the March Wave was on shelves. I don't know if I want to say that it was stocked, because I actually didn't see prices, but I did grab a short clip here. Um, that is Star Wars on the bottom right, and then just panning up here some of the Speed Champions, uh, specifically the Ferrari, this got reviewed on Brickset recently. Uh, there's a few prices on there, but then, you know, for the space station, I don't see where they have that marked. It's just out on the shelf. So, the uh, Speed Champions wave was there. Uh, I do like some of those cars. I think the two-pack, there's another two-pack of the eight wide cars. Uh, the double with two cars in it, that's $30. I think that's a good deal. Um, I ended up with the Jaguar double pack from... 2020, I think that's um, it's one of those. So um, just part per piece wise, you're getting two cars for 30 bucks. At the same time, there's other double packs that are 50. So, however they put the price point on there, it's kind of interesting to see. Now, when it comes to channel analytics, get some stuff set up for that real quick here, and have that going. Um, this month, decent, decent views, watch time, 17,000 views coming in uh, as of yesterday, and that's pretty steady throughout the month. Um, for a while, we were above 500 a day, and then that just dipped below on the 24th by uh, 17. So 483, and then we're back up again. So that's really the lowest we've been for a solid three months or so, which I feel like is pretty good. We're, we're uh, consistent right now. Watch time in hours, uh, approaching that 800 mark once again. This reflects the past month or two. I think January was pretty strong here. Um, and once again, seeing that mostly consistent throughout the month. Another 68 subscribers, uh, where we're, again, not up or down too much. And um, I'm not really sure. I haven't checked super recently, but last time I did look into this, 
a lot of subscribers are not really coming from one specific video. It's really all the way across the channel in terms of who is subscribing and who's logging on to watch. And revenue running the ads, $24.24. There's a bit of an anomaly here, $2.83 on the 23rd, whereas the rest of the days are barely at a dollar, if that. So kind of interesting to see the 23rd had a peak, had a spike there. Mm, couldn't tell you what that's from. Someone watching all of our ads. So thanks for that. And this will be the 10th video out this month. Lower in production terms. Uh, there's quite a bit going on personally, just getting moved, getting started at work. Um, but I think I can safely say that will be going back up, maybe not quite to the 20, 25 range that we had for a while, but probably more than 10. Um, if I can manage to find things to talk about. Opening up the avenue to look at Rebrickable, I think that's going to go well. Uh, possibly more content that I could be diving into there. And uh, there's already stuff coming in for hauls that could be ongoing as well. Um, tomorrow I'm going to pick up some uh, purchases and other items of interest. Hopefully we'll be ending up on the channel, so keep an eye out for those. All right, let's talk about some random stuff to uh, wrap it up for today. This abomination was uh, practice, messing around. It all started with, uh, it's actually completely buried now, but I put a plate in between the inner edge and the uh, the circular tube grip. So this width in between here is, I mean, it's a little tight, but I think it's the correct width for a regular plate. Um, what I actually put in there was a bracket, and then I just started building on that bracket. So uh, a steady in LEGO dimensions here, and probably the most interesting aspect is this red door slotting in nicely next to the tile. Um, as the train goes in the background, you can probably hear it, but I'm going to finish this up anyways. Uh, another dark bluish gray frog. That's for Cafe Corner. I think I need one or two more of those guys now. Getting really close. And this interesting connection of an old version of a propeller and a 2x2 brick. So that uh, outer dimension of the tube grip sleeving together perfectly with the inner dimension, the inner diameter of this propeller connection, which matches up with a, uh, does it match up with a Technic pin? I've got Technic sorted here. Let's see if I've got a pin on top. Come on. They're all going to the bottom. I don't think it's a Technic pin. I think it's too big. Yeah, it's too big for Technic pin. There's a there's a custom size spoke that these propellers go on. I don't know if I have any on hand at the moment, but uh, in any case, I'd I'd had that put together for a while. I just never had mentioned it. Um, it's a somewhat tight connection, but it feels legal, and that might be completely useless in terms of building techniques. What it gives you is a, a half stud offset on every face. So it's it's basically a jumper plate in reverse, and then it's going to add a plate of thickness to the whole thing. So uh, a regular brick is three plates tall, and then this is a regular plate width, but it reverses the build direction and then centers it up compared to the brick. So it's going to be a little unwieldy because it, it does expand in all directions. It doesn't really make a nice compact uh, direction reverse, but that that jump, that offset on there might actually come in handy if that's something needed for a project. I have no idea beyond this just putting them together what that could possibly be useful for, but it would be interesting to see if anyone else has A, done this in the first place, and B, actually used it um, to utilize it in a build, I guess, to make use of that. So that stuff, you know, just random miscellaneous things that 
go well in footnotes and don't go well anywhere else unless I do a table scrap video, which I thought about. But I left all my table scraps in Iowa, so I'll have to go back and do that another day. Um, but that's February 2022 on Brick System Brothers. We got more stuff coming in March. We'll see you guys there.